Welcome to a football show. Good to be back. My name is Braden Gall. That is Zach Lyons. Brought to you, of course, by Sinkers Beverages and the Kingston Group. So come on in, retweet, share, like, subscribe, all of those things. It is, uh, this is going to sound weird, Zach, but it is absolutely effing wonderful to see your face. It is just genuinely. It is weird. It's I don't genu- even think my wife feels that like 90% of the year. It is so good to see you. D good already in the comments. So good to see you. Uh, I, I, I honestly sinkers beverages love seeing that logo Kingston group. Can't just so wonderful to see that logo. Uh, just absolutely great to be here. Uh, didn't miss anything. Of course, uh, for me last week, the Titans are exactly the same as they were a week and a half ago. No, exactly. complete, completely different team, which I, I think I sort of, needed some time to think about it i needed some time for a lot of reasons this past week zach we'll get to that in a minute uh but i I think that i've sort of landed on a few general overarching theories about what the titan strategy has been throughout the first 10 days of free agency i guess less than that i guess it's like seven days of free agency and um yes I, i did feel like uh kate middleton to some extent um i don't know exactly what it's like to be royalty uh, but I did feel like I was fucking missing for about a week. <laughs> that, that is that is true. Uh, okay, so Sinker's Beverages. Stay tuned, folks, before we get into Titans free agency content. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to have some information for you very, very soon. I know we've said this before on the show, and so we do appreciate you guys being patient because we're working out all the details. But we're going to have a really great draft weekend plan for you. You have to go to Sinker's Beverages and sign up for the in crowd. You can do it digitally. You can do it online. You don't have to go to the store. You can sign up there. But it's a great it's a great liquor store. It's been voted best liquor store in the city for years now, multiple years in a row. They're basically the Kansas City Chiefs of selling booze in the city. Uh, so go check them out. Sign up for the in crowd. Great selection. Uh, great expertise and huge fans of Nashville sports, locally owned and operated. Bluegrass Beverages, of course, in Hendersonville. The Kingston Group, of course, as well. BuildKG.com is the website. So. Uh, Zach, I, I needed, <laughs> I don't know how your, your week last week went. Cause I, I thought the shows were great. I thought you and Easton and Stoney and Mike, you all had a great time. I can't wait to react to Calvin Ridley and to, to Lloyd Cushenberry, who also sounds like a, a British Royal family member, by the way. Um, I, I think we were exactly right. So I'm just going to start the show there. This is why you listen to this particular show, 440 sports, hot read podcast, football and other F words. Uh, we basically told you exactly what was going to happen. They went and did it. We'll get to what it means. Uh, but I first have to bitch for a second. Is that okay? That's fine. I, I, I do not understand amusement parks. Like as a concept. I, I understand the rides being awesome. I understand. Like going on great roller coasters, super fun. Super awesome. Love it. Guardians of the Galaxy, spectacular. One of the best roller coasters I've ever been on my entire life. Star Wars, one of the most unique and spectacular rides I have ever been on in my entire life. But the concept of spending, like I went to, I went to, took my two kids to Disney World. I work as a Disney employee, just to be, to be very clear. I got no discounts. I got nothing. I just want to be very clear. I'm saying this as a part-time employee of Disney. I came back dumber, fatter, poorer, and more exhausted than any other trip I have taken my entire life. And I accomplished. That's not right. I don't. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like every trip to Disneyland <laughs> that I've ever heard anybody take. Because my parents, I haven't been to Disneyland. I haven't been to an amusement park, like a legit amusement park. I've been to the Memphis like fairgrounds <laughs> a couple of times, but I've been to a legit amusement park in like twenty years, maybe. Uh, what would that put me at? Eighteen? No, way more than that. So like twenty-five years. Twenty-five. Maybe. Okay. Like, yeah. Um. But my parents, a couple about ten years ago, took my cousin's kids to Disney Disneyland, and they had a they had a great time because they spent time with with these kids and had fun. But they had blisters, were exhausted, were sweaty, were tired. It's like it's not built. It's not really built for people over. I would say probably like over forty five for sure. Like you're kind of in that of age range. You're you're in that age range, Braden, where yeah. it's a little difficult to go do stuff like that for a whole week. Now, yes. Now, let me first first of all, Z Dean's in the comments. D good, uh, stupid, but yeah, uh, a great great handle there as well. Look, look. Here's the deal. My seven and five year old 
they had memories that they will have the rest of their lives. So ultimately, yeah. our goal was accomplished. The in, my, my parents, my family, it was all accomplished. My brothers were there. They accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. It was a spectacular memory for my seven and five-year-old daughters. They're, they're going to remember everything, most of it. My, my daughter, who's five, is basically six. She turned six in like a couple of weeks. They're going to, they, and, she, and she's the one who rolled everything like twice. She did Everest twice. She did, you know, Slinky Dog twice. Like she's yelling, like, Slinky Dog, Slinky Dog, like on the, on the roller coaster. She's great. The seven year old has no desire. Does she have play. a thick th Southern accent like you just gave no, her? No, no. This is, this <laughs> okay. is what, this is what I think is, I'm kind of concerned about because they've gotten it from me. And I don't have a, a thick Southern accent. But when I do like any, like any sort of like change in my voice, it immediately goes to like, hey, fucking balls, baby, let's go. Like, that's how it goes. It goes like Trey Crowder. And yeah. and so like my my five year old who has brilliant comedic timing more than everybody else in the family just starts screaming on the roller coaster like slinky dog. <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right, way to go. You're having a great time. Point is, they had a great time. Otherwise, it is thousands of dollars and so much time and stress and energy to to stand in lines in the heat in in Florida for largely four straight days and it's hard man it is hard 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 <laughs> and i meanwhile i'm like sitting there like and expensive oh. it's expensive i it, mean we we were cheap. invited by a, a couple of friends they go down uh his work sends him down and so the, his wife goes and we we they asked us to go last year on a couple's trip with them to go down there and i'm looking at these hotel rooms and all this stuff and i'm like Fuck no, I'm not going. And my and my wife's never been. Lauren's never been to Disneyland, Disney World, doesn't matter. She's never been. She desperately wants to go. And so I told her to keep buying Mega Millions tickets and yeah. then we'll go to Disneyland. Well, what's what's really funny is that like we negotiated this uh, like with my parents as the grandparents. Like over ye years go by and they're like, Can we go to Disney World? And we're, we're like, No, we're not gonna go. And so eventually they just were like, Well, we'll buy the tickets. And we're like, Okay, fine, we'll be there. So we so we 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 show up. Of course, we had a insane travel day like our flight is canceled on saturday uh the first weekend two weekends ago and it just was an absurd travel day so we had to come back home with like a bawling and seven five seven and five year old like why aren't we going on vacation dad I'm like sorry you get to sleep in your own bed tonight honey sorry and then we finally get on a different airline fly into a different city and drive a different two and a half hours to finally get there again it was all for the kids we did it it was magical for them they stayed up for the fireworks the first night at magic kingdom did the whole deal did the whole deal. And and while this is happening, I'm trying to track Titans free agent moves. <laughs> but you have no time to look at social media because you have to be refreshing the app to like get yourself into fucking lines at the goddamn park. It's it's insane. Oh my gosh. It's insane. Did you so, at least go to Epcot? Epcot was 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 probably my Epcot was probably my favorite uh anim that's animal for character. adults. <laughs> it it was we did more stuff at, at epcot than we did we were able to do basically everything and we ate like great food there because the food's better yeah. but there's more kids stuff there now than in the past animal okay. kingdom was great um again star wars is the is the most creative amusement park ride i've ever been on ever uh but guardians of the galaxy might be the best roller coaster i've ever been on ever so there were there were some extremely high moments for the kiddos i am now finally back to feeling like a normal human after two nights of sleeping in my own bed uh, and getting to study like salary cap tables and like depth charts and like looking at who's still available in the free agency market. Chase Young apparently is still on the on the board for the Tennessee Titans. Um, and so ultimately, and, and I I want to say thank you to Stony Keeley, of course. Shout out Stop Sobros Network, East and Freeze, of course, uh, Hot Read Podcast for you guys stepping in and, and spending a lot of time. JT uh, as well, you guys, great show on Thursday, uh, average show on Monday, Stony. But I think what was and I think you guys hit on a few things. One of the things I wanted to react to, because I want to sort of have some some time to re react to each individual signing, but more more so, I think Zach, the the collective strategy of the entire organization. And I think one of the things that struck me in y'all's episode on Thursday was uh, Easton asked a question, uh, and you had a great answer, and it was a great question and a great answer. Uh, and I'm going to paraphrase here, so don't don't hold me to the exact wording here, but basically, well, Easton mentioned, well, why isn't this sort of like every other spending spree in the history of the NFL free agency world? Like, why don't, you know, why, why don't we, we look at other teams that do this in the NFL and we go automatically like, that's not it, man. That's not the way it works. That's not the way you do it. You can't build a championship that way. 
what makes this one different and why won't this one be viewed the same way as the other ones, which I think is a, a very a, a great question. And your answer, I'm again paraphrasing here, was because expectations are still pretty low and the team's not expecting to set expectations at a higher level. So they're filling in the gaps on the roster. And I think that was a really interesting way to describe what the Titans did through the first eight or nine days. Do you feel differently at all? I'll give you, you know, obviously you know how much I, I like Calvin Ridley. I've been on him right. for, a, for a long time. So I think he does unlock a lot of things for this team and we'll get to that. But have you changed it all from Monday when tampering started and we started, we, we saw Tony Pollard get signed and through all the shows and the content, have you, has anything changed? Has anything in your opinion changed about what the Titan strategy is so far in free agency? <sighs> No, not really, because they're still just going through the competitive rebuild. But I, oh, I wish yeah, I don't, it, oh, that's why do you use that phrase? <laughs> what do you mean? That's that's a David Poyle, I mean, and that's a David Poyle. That's phrase. a phrase that you said, like earlier in the season. You could be you could be competitive during a rebuild. Oh God, you rebuild said on the fly. A, uh, you like a rebuild on the fly? It's just David Poyle used the phrase competitive rebuild, and like it, you, it was used to like basically have him resign from hockey. <laughs> Well, listen. I, I mean, I'll, I'll get down with it however you want to use it. I mean, it's all. It all means the same thing. Is that they're they're trying to be, com, they're they're That's rebuilding true. on the fly. Okay, they, they're. I I think that the two year thing, three year thing, looking at their moves, at their rumored moves as well. Like their actions speak louder than words. They, I think they set expectations for everybody that if they don't get every free agent or if they don't get every signing or everybody that they want and they don't move, make the moves everybody that they make, they've set the expectations of, here's our built-in excuse for you. So two, it's, we're two or three years away. But their moves do not scream that they are two or three years away. Their moves scream that they think that possibly – there's a good opening with the way the Bills have had a hemorrhage with a lot of turnover in the AFC in general, with the Jaguars repeating their same mistake of last year, which is insane to me, and the Colts not really getting that much better. They've re-signed, uh, again, a bunch of their own players. They're banking on Anthony Richardson that maybe there's a chance you could sneak in in a wild card. They're, uh, like, I think, yeah. ultimately, I'm not there to the point where – for for Mike on Wednesday's show, football and other efforts, he said Calvin Ridley's a needle mover for me. I I think I'm gonna learn from my mistakes and not get over like excited about oh well now they can maybe go win nine games maybe they can win eight games or anything we'll we'll see we'll see how the rest of this stuff plays out and I wish I had saved the tweet because right after that show. And I cannot find it. I don't know if it was Lance Zierlein and there was another guy. Um, oh, I don't think it's Lance Reddick is the guy I'm thinking of, but it may be. But um, they, someone said there's a difference between buying a roster and building a roster, and and that's where that's the difference. Yep. Like ultimately, the answer to that question is they're not buying a roster. They're not buying wins. They are building wins. Even these moves scream to me, they are building wins for the future. Yeah, so I do have individual takes on individual players, obviously Ridley being the biggest and most prominent. But I think ultimately where I landed, sort of studying the whole picture and seeing Ridley and Cushenberry and Wouzier and Pollard and Murray, and then frankly, bringing Nick Folk back, Mason Rudolph, uh, NWI, handful of other moves that they've made so far, is... That I think ultimately, and we haven't gotten to Andre Dillard being cut. Uh, of course, it, the, Sp Spotrac has him at like a four point seven signing bonus dead cap hit. I don't that that was only if they Spotrac's wrong. Uh, yeah, I they, caught that. I caught that over the weekend, and I got with OTC and let them know that they hadn't they had it wrong too. It is OTC is what is accurate right now currently. So and and so Glenn that and, would be forty six point seven million. Well and. If they designate him a post June first cut, we can again we can get into all this. But I, I want to stay. He's already stay, been cut, so you, you can't. Right, it, right. It's already it's already done. What I mean is, had they they could have saved some money. We'll get into that in a second. I, I want to sort of stay with the big picture strategy because this goes right to Z Dean's question. It says, "Well, the Titans stick and pick at seven. Falling back is making more and more sense." He, here's ultimately where I landed after looking at the whole picture. 
And that is that every single thing is now on the table. And I mean that in every possible way, on a micro level, on a player schematic level, on a big picture strategy level, on a roster level, on a draft level, on a wins and loss record. Are you, do you need to, do you need a moment? Well, I, f- I found that tweet I was okay. was referencing. It was from Louis Reddick, Lewis. not Lance Reddick. That, that guy died, unfortunately. Rest in Ooh. peace, Lance Reddick. Um, team building and talent collection are two different things, but most are not ready to dis- for that discussion. And that's where I think the difference is between what the Titans are doing and what the Jacksonville Jaguars have done, what the Cleveland Browns have done in the past. They are team building not talent collecting. And man, I wish that tweet had been there before Eason had asked that question because I could have said exactly what I'd already said in way fewer words. I I also don't like, they're not, ultimately the answer to that question, I think you you got right, which to me is that it's different because they're not trying to win a Super Bowl with this free agency class. They're trying to just stop the water from like, exiting the like entering the boat like they're just trying to keep the boat afloat with a lot of these moves but but in doing so are they planning for more down the road and that is ultimately where i landed on this draft strategy is number one is now completely wide open here's one that i have not heard anybody talk about don't be i i would not be surprised if they take a defensive tackle at seven don't be you see what i'm saying i I would but 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 even if they trade back to 13 that one at seven worth it they trade back to 13. They go defensive tackle or pass rusher or corner. I'm just saying defense is now clearly potentially an option. Their strategy is wide open now in the draft. I, I still haven't changed. Is Joe, If Joe Alt's available, I'd like him the best. I still like a trade back more, even more now because of, of Ridley and some of the other pieces they've added. But if you look at what they've done, their their draft strategy is now completely wide open. They can do whatever they want. And we can we can all disagree on which players we do or don't like or what positions we do or don't like, but everything is on the table now. They've given themselves flexibility in the draft. Number two, on-field strategy, offensively, building around Will Levis, is now completely wide open moving forward. You you can now have... Yeah, go for it. Let's call it building around a quarterback. Okay. Because I think you have to because find out. Yes, they are building around Will Levis, but they are not building around with Will Levis as like concrete. He is the guy. I, I, like, you I'm, get what a million I'm saying? Percent. Yes, a million percent. Because ultimately, this is all going to lead to one last point. <laughs> yeah. And but but what Calvin Ridley and Tony Pollard and Cushenberry allow you to do, it gives you freedom in the draft strategy department, and what that flexibility gives you. And then on the on the field, Calvin Ridley and Pollard and Cushenberry give you on field flexibility because what does Calvin Ridley do well he draws attention away from DeAndre Hopkins he draws attention away from the running backs he draws attention away from Chig and the tight ends he, you can run him he's he basically wins and gets open on every route on the route tree he he gives Will Levis another person to target like there's flexibility there's way more flexibility it's now completely wide open offensively to do whatever Brian Callahan wants to do and then last but not least and I think this is ultimately what matters maybe the most for fans the wins and losses on the field are now completely what every scenario is on the table in my mind. Winning the division is not out of the question. Would I pick that? No. Am I suggesting that's going to happen? No. Could they win nine games and win the division? Maybe. I think Houston's probably much better than that. But my point is, is that the, the potential is all there now. Look, their last... I would say, I would push back on one overarching thing. Go They're it. drafting a left tackle high. Like, I think that is, yes, the other options are available to you. You could still trade back if you want to, because now they're, you know, with Minnesota Vikings having draft picks, Denver does not have a fucking quarterback, and they're not being talked enough as a trade-up partner. Both those guys could, both those teams could trade up with the Cardinals, could trade up with the Chargers, who are both rumored to now want to move back. And sure, Maybe that means Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors falls to you because everybody's going to be taking a quarterback. Because remember, even teams like the Giants are going to consider, heavily consider, taking a quarterback this year because the yep. quarterback class next year is pretty terrible. So, yeah, I agree that there's more option. I think every, all the percentages have switched around like your probability percentages for stuff to happen at seven. But at the end of the day, 
I would be totally shocked if their first round pick, whether they have two because Minnesota traded up or whatever, sure, is not a left tackle. I I agree. I, mean, I could be completely shocked. No, no, I I agree. I, I'm what I'm what I'm getting to with all of these points. Again, the win loss they are last right now according to to most Vegas odds to win the AFC. Dead last. In the entire Now's AFC. the time to buy low, by the way. I yeah, think yes. buy, buy, bet now on the Titans to win the AFC South. Plus, throw $20 on it. It's plus 800, I think, was the lo- oh, lowest they, odds I saw. They are plus 7,500 tied with New England to win the AFC. But that means get uh, to the to win Super the AFC. Bowl. <clears throat> gotcha. The point is, they are dead last. So Vegas is telling you, again, we know what Vegas is trying to do. They're trying to split the, the, the bets and spread out the money so that they win because the house always wins. And yes, to, to your point, PK, yes, they have to get a tackle in one of the first two rounds. Completely agree. Even if they go and get one of these dumpster diving tackles uh, in, in free agency. But ultimately, I had a pretty good sense of what I felt like the team was going to do on offense, what they were going to do in the draft and what they were going to be on the field. I think now there are significantly more possibilities. And the win loss potential now, there's no, there's a chance this team is the worst team in the NFL and it's picking number two. I, I don't I think that that window, the range of opportunity now for wins and losses is massive to me now. It's just much, much wider. Just like the offensive options are now wider, just like the draft strategy is now wider. And we can get to this all lands eventually to your point. It lands on is Will Levis the guy? It all comes back to they they're doing everything in their power. They need to address left tackle, I agree, or right tackle, a a tackle. They are doing everything in their power to give themselves as enough information as possible to decide and learn and figure out if Will Levis is the answer. That's it. That's what they're doing. And I think it's the right strategy. I'm a Calvin Ridley guy. I've been on the Calvin Ridley train for a long time, so I can't come on this show now and say, I think they overpaid. I think they did overpay, but I'm okay with that because I think he unlocks everything else. But and he allows him to do everything. The contract isn't really that much of an overpay. It's, and then what, it's not terrible. And, and again, it may look like an over. It doesn't. It may look like an overpay now, but at the end of it, but I I say this. I know he's like top ten. I think in average annual value, he won't be top ten by the time the season starts. No. He he may he may barely be top fifteen by the time the season starts. And by the time the season ends, when all these other ex- extensions and stuff happen, he's going to be down even further. It happens all the time. And we talked about that. Don't, you know, going into this, don't re over, don't go crazy because my God, let me tell you something. You better be glad that you were on this vacation. You couldn't have social media because when the Calvin Ridley announcement was signed, every national media member shat on it. They took a big old hot steaming oh, dump on bad. it and just, and just said, they said this was stupid It doesn't make any sense. It's so much of an overpay. Basically, everything that you heard last year about Calvin Ridley, they've now over course corrected, and they all hate him because he went to the Tennessee Titans. If he would have went to the Patriots or would have went to the Jaguars, they'd been like, "Oh man, thank goodness that they kept you know they kept Calvin Ridley. Thank goodness that um, you know the Patriots they they're really making moves." But because of the Tennessee Titans. They shed and, all over, and, which was which was idi- and their reasoning was all idiotic. It made well, no sense. Well, and what did we say? This is this was ultimately my argument for Ridley. Like they're going to have to pay him more than Hopkins, but Hopkins is the number one uh, for for one year. Hopkins is the number one. Ridley is your he may number not, two. It may not even last a year, to be honest with may, you. With the way not. that Calvin Ridley runs routes, uh, I don't know. Like the, it's the, really hard. To, it's going to be really hard for him not to be the one. But I get your point. You pay him like a. You pay him in the hopes that he turns into a wide right. receiver one. And based on his press conferences, which if you haven't watched those, Braden, I definitely encourage you to go back and watch his uh, OTP and the actual press conference for him. Um, I would be surprised if this guy does not reach at least 1,100 yards. I, I think at stati- least. I think I think talent wise and statistical production wise, he's a more he's a better player than DeAndre Hopkins. I think. From like a right leader, now, yeah. a le- from a leadership and like focus and like there's a lot of other things that make Hopkins. I think the number basically, I think you have the worst number one in the league and like the best number two, which is still a place the Titans haven't been in a very very long time. And so ultimately, he is both a short term and long term answer. He helps your draft strategy. He helps your offense. He helps your head coach. He helps your young quarterback. He helps every possible situation. So I obviously I can't I can't say for months that I want Calvin Ridley and then. 
turn around and shit on the deal. I think it's an excellent move. I think it's the right move for the it's team. It's a good deal. I mean, I still I agree. think it's a very good deal. I agree. So um, ult ultimately, what, yeah. what matters is learning about Levis, and I think it opens up the possibilities. Everything is now on the table. They, they, they go and get a linebacker. They go and get a running back. Like running back is now maybe a seventh round pick, but that was kind of what we thought earlier in the in in the in the yeah. process anyway. I could have but, been talked in before Tony Pollard. I would have been talked into like I think in the fifth round, fourth or fifth round, they're going to take a running back. But now they're not. It's all about flexibility. And yes, tackle and offensive line is still clearly the most glaring weakness. I think corner and defensive line are still bigger than than people think. Even going to get a Wouzier, but losing Autry, I still think there's there are more surprises. And I don't know if Chase Young changes that. If they go sign Chase Young, I'm all for it. If they want to give him a prove it deal and say, let's see what you got. You know, he's maybe not a perfect every situational, every down player, but like lots of talent, lots of pedigree. Let's give it a shot. Let's see. I, you could do a lot worse than that from a depth standpoint. It's hard to replace Autry and what he does on, on, on a down in, down out basis, the flexibility that he gives your defense. I don't know if you can replace that piece in the draft or in free agency, uh, but there are other needs on this team. You, okay, you know how when you create a player on Madden or in college football, like you want to, you, you can go like ninety nine speed, or or and then like give up a bunch of points yeah. elsewhere. It feels like what they did is elevate every position group on the roster just by like a couple of notches and receiver, maybe more, and it gives them the ability to add mm -hmm. pieces wherever they want moving forward. If that makes sense, I would totally disagree that they that every piece of the roster, every position group on the roster is incrementally better, no matter what. There there are tons that are levels worse, including the defensive line, linebacker, and safety. Are oh, well, safety could be probably just the same, I, but I let mean, me let me, let me clarify. Let me clarify. worse. Let me let me clarify. I agree. Their defensive line is worse without Autry. Uh, what I mean is, is they took a and their linebackers are terrible. They took a broader approach, yes, versus versus a, a narrow approach. And we'll see what if there's another round of free agency moves, what the draft brings. But they had all they had so many holes. We said it like they had like nine starting players on the on the roster, and now they have more. <laughs> now, now they yeah. have more than nine. Um, I look. I think linebacker. Sure, if Mer Kenneth Murray is not as good as as he's Al Shair, but I think he's got potential. I think he's got more athletic ability. Uh, but you're gonna have to find someone to, you know, maybe be the 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 brains of the operation. And that maybe sounds insulting. It's not meant to be. He is a sideline to sideline, see ball, get ball kind of guy. But you you need someone that's gonna do more. I think Pollard is great. I think running back is set. I think Nick That's Folk the was worst the contract, by the way, is the Kenneth Murray contract. That is by far the worst contract that they have done. Nick it's Folk. the most perplexing move. It's the move that I will beat to death with a horse, and people are gonna get, and people are already tired of it because they want only lollipops and rain corn shoved up their ass and in their ear holes. <laughs> rain, but rain corns. <laughs> You know, did I say rain corns? Rain corns. I said, rainbows and, I said rainbows and unicorns. Okay, maybe you did. Maybe I maybe my brain's not back yet. Um, but at this at this point, I you have to wonder why they would decide early, out of all the linebackers that were available, why they decided to jump in on Kenneth Murray, Murray early and pay him eight million dollars for one year, which is more than what other players are getting paid that are better than him. It yeah, makes Dev, no sense. Devin it's White's contract move. Yeah, Devin White's yeah, contract it, was the same basically. Yeah, uh, per, it's, it's a perplexing year. move for a guy that hasn't proved anything in the NFL other than he is bad. And maybe and and maybe they're they are unlike the maybe position coaches of the past, maybe they are actually able to elevate someone that is bad into good. Stu I'm not historically betting on it because that's not only it's not only the fact that the Tennessee Titans rarely have done it, but also, it does not happen in the NFL very often. Like, how many linebackers of Kenneth Murray's ilk have came in and through four years have shown no progression in any phase of the game, have decided to skip teams and then suddenly become the guy? Like, last one I can remember is Zach Brown. Well, and they did. Like, so they, and that was yeah. like one year of good first round pick. They don't pick up his option. They let him walk. He did have his best season last year. Uh, I look the. If you're if you're just going to go with Rand Carthon and Denar Wilson and say we need to be faster and more violent, well, he is faster and more violent. There's that. The question is, is he going to be in the right place? 
and th- yeah. that's a that's a big concern. Um, Z Dean said, "No, uh, hang on, that's not the one. I, that's not the question I wanted." Uh, Stupid, but yeah, says we need D line. Chase Young could try the Autry role. I don't think Chase Young can play the Autry role. I don't know if you can slide him to inside. Be honest, the Autry role only became known because of Danico Autry. Is there? Was there? I don't think there was a guy on this team that ever played the Danico Autry ro- role before Danico. For under Mike Vrabel, well, or any I, of those guys. do you think Casey and had some of those nobody, same? Don't you think Casey had no, some of those same Darrell skills? Casey's more of a Jeffrey Simmons guy. Like I agree, I agree. Yeah, I mean, Janico, listen, you were dropping Jarrell Casey back in coverage. No, no, you're right. That's true. Although, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that to me, maybe there's not going to be a Danico Autry role, and that's fine. Maybe they're going to have a more traditional defensive end, hand in the dirt you know, that can play all three downs. Maybe that's Rashawn Weaver. That uh, Both those options are scary because they're both greatly, greatly worse <laughs> than Danico Autry. Right now, there is a, and I wrote about it today at stackintheinbox.com. So on Monday, go to stackintheinbox.com about how the Titans should have should have attacked the D in free agency a little bit better. Got to attack and the D, yep. Got to attack the D, and that was on purpose. And um, the... When you look at what's available in the draft, because I went through, I pulled up PFF's draft guide, which has the stable metrics. When you see the linebackers, that what they consider right now, so what right now out in their draft guide is what they consider the top position players. They'll add more as the season goes on, but these are their top position players, priority position players. Linebacker's terrible, defensive line is terrible, and safety is terrible. And what three positions do the Tennessee Titans need right now? Defensive line, linebacker, and safety. Now, here's the good thing about safety is that there are still safeties available because those are the most devalued position groups in this free agent market, but they're still really good quality names. The problem with the Tennessee Titans approach, and this is their approach for any position, any free agency. This is like a mad lib inter-position group in. When there is a surplus of talent at a position group that you have a striking glaring need on need for there is no reason not to pursue modest contracts with modest starters just because this if you few the the point of a team in a rebuild is not to make position groups worse it's to make positions better moderately better or incrementally better doesn't have to be elite it strange, doesn't have to be filled with elite or great players. But strange strategy. if you're making two position groups worse, you're taking three step backwards. Yeah. Like it makes no sense. It's well, the let me ask it's you the most asinine approach if people do not understand that. Let, let me ask you. I, the only one I that actually most people do, but. The, like I understand your distaste for Murray. I'm a little bit more and uh, you and I probably are on the I, I think I would kind of put Traylon Burks in the same boat as Kenneth Murray, like lots of pure athletic talent and ability. If if given the opportunity, maybe he's a post hype guy, which is a term that we use in sports. Like, hey, didn't work in the first couple of years. Just took him a while to come around on it. Maybe that works. Different reasons, right? I think diagnostic skills for Murray, health, and 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 maybe for for Burks. But I think like Mason Rudolph. Okay, fine, super cheap contract, very good contract. I don't think he's yeah, a, great. a great. I'm but I don't but, with Rudolph. But I don't I don't love him individually as the guy backing up Will Levis. But again, if that's the thing that makes or breaks your season, like you've missed the point at that point. Like yeah. you're missing the point. But he's also was the best of a crop of quarterbacks, even that were available. I mean, like the the backups, I mean, really, I'm taking Mason Rudolph over everybody except for Jacoby Brissett. And maybe Jimmy G. You could talk me into Jimmy G. I, I, but like right. Tyrod Taylor, yeah. I'm out on Joe Flacco. I would have liked, but you know, I'm I don't think Mason Rudolph and Joe Flacco have this world of difference between the two of them. Okay. Let me let me ask you let me ask you stuff like that. Let me ask you a defensive question then, since we're all about attacking the D here. Sinkers beverages, Kingston Group. I'm sure they love that segue. Um I, I think like if you told me that Elijah Molden and Amani Hooker are the starting safeties on this team and that they're gonna go draft a corner fairly high, second round, thirty eight, or trade back in the first round, or even trade back in the second round, something like that, right? Somewhere in the top fifty, let's say. I, I still think I'm still I'm still more comfortable with another corner and no safety than I am going to get now. Could they go sign a safety? Yeah. A- absolutely. That's what I'm saying. You don't want to draft a safety. <laughs> Let me say how, something. How comfortable no, are they're, you? They're if, terrible. <laughs> if 
It, <laughs> right, well, I, I like the guys late. Like Jalen Simpson out of Auburn, for example, you can get in the sixth or seventh round. I think that's an interesting player. Yeah, if good luck to, for him getting anything out of him. Like if, at this point, like those guys are great special teamers, but that's not what this team needs right now. I mean, you do need special teamers, but at this point, the team is 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 barren on the defensive side of the football with plus even average starters like a bare minimum capable starters it is barren on we, and that to me in in a rebuild you are looking to have capable starters you don't need elite starters or blue chip starters or even great I good agree. starters capable starters and they are they have none hardly well that to me that's why my question is are you comfortable with molden and hooker starting the season as your starting safeties i think they're both capable starters like i yeah, don't think I mean, like, you know what i mean like i'm not lesser, as worried about to that. a lesser extent i'm with you like i I, safety, like I said earlier in in a couple of minutes ago, was just like they're they're, they're a devalued position, and that's why they're still Justin Simmons is still out there, and there's still some other safeties that are out there that you can sign, and you just gotta wait them. That's a, that's when is a fine time to wait on the market when it's like a running back or safety position when you know there's yeah. a lot of guys and you could just kind of wait them out. That's that's a good strategy. It's also a good strategy for offensive tackles to not go out and sign any of these offensive tackles because the the safety or the offensive tackle depth in the draft is so good. Same with wide receiver. To, the problem is, is that when you look at linebacker, like a corner, you're good either way. There's still some good names out. Is good. I mean, not capable. Good, good-ish. Yeah. Capable names. You still are in the hunt for this luxurious Sneed thing, if anybody can really nail down where these rumors start and begin. But their name is mentioned in connection to Legereus Sneed. I think the Chiefs want but to keep him. There's also... Yeah, I, I do too. Uh, I, I also think there's a, a lot of defensive backs in the draft, a lot of cornerbacks in the draft that are really, really good. And I think everybody's now overcorrected and they're too low on Kool-Aid McKinstry, for example. Yep. I agree. But there are still guys at 38 that makes sense if you happen to pick up with the you know 11 and 23 from the Vikings. There are guys that make sense yep. in the first round. Yep. So there are guys there that make sense. So when you get one of those guys, Roger McCreary, Chidobe Awuze, Chidobe Awuze, uh, and then whoever else you may have in your back. Field, you can do an Elijah Molden, Kayvon Wallace, uh, Amani Hooker trio and be yeah. all right. Yeah. The problem is, is your linebacker and your defensive line. That is, that is your problem. And it's I, a glaringly, uh, it's, yeah. it's a, it was bad to let those markets dry up because the draft does not work in your favor with your current set of draft picks. Okay. So I will, this is why I think anything is on. I don't, I think Titans fans should be. I don't think expecting, but prepared for anything to happen. Like literally anything could happen. They could trade back to 14 and take a defensive player. It's it's possible. I'm not saying that's what I would do or what I think they should do, but I'm just saying it is, it is possible because they still have a glaring need on the defensive line and at corner. Now, middle linebacker, I think, and safety, you can address later in the draft. And and maybe middle linebacker goes from a fifth you, round you, pick me, to a third round pick. Something. Brayden, you cannot you cannot rely on any of these linebackers to start for you on day one unless you're picking one at 38. I'm saying that's and a none possibility. None of these guys are worth picking at 38. Uh, uh, well, they're, like, they're not worth it. If you that, trade that, back then to you can't. But that's but that is a bad. That is that is my beef. That's my beef with this whole thing. It's not because of linebacker. It's because you have now pigeonholed yourself in a draft by leaving holes glaringly open. You have. Listen, you can say Kenneth Murray all you want till you're blue in the face. You have two void of voids of nothingness at linebacker right now. And it's a dark abyss at linebacker. I, it is a black hole of talent, devoid of talent. There's nothing there to cling hope to I, day I think one. you're missing I think you're missing my point. I don't give a fuck. I they fixed the but things that's the they, problem. You should give a fuck. No, 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 no. What I'm why. saying is hang on. What I'm saying is, is you can't fix it all at one time. You can't fix yes, it you all can. at once. You could have. You could have. I, you I could have, you. Braden. I hear you. You could have. I they hear chose you. not to, or they decided not to. They, they. That is the problem I have, is that they did not take advantage of two position groups that are really deep in free agency. It, it did not get any of the guys that they, they were linked to or whatever. They let them leave, and 
they could have they could have paid him and paid them to listen. They definitely could have paid him if they hadn't paid that dumbass Ke Kenneth Murray and that guy. If okay. they didn't overpay right. him, they right. definitely could have paid him. Right. But the point is, is that it's always it's it's the strategy. You guys are so focused on the position, you're not focused on the philosophy and the strategy. It is a bad philosophy. It's a bad process. It is a bad process, and everybody that's like, oh, we should just trust Rand. We were all part of the NJ Rob We Trust movement, and we saw how that ended up. It, we have to call out bad processes okay. as we see them. This is a bad process for any position group to ignore the position group and overpay for a bad player at the start of the position group, ignore the position group, and then rely on the draft you. when there you. aren't draft prospects. I hear you, and there's lots of other there's people in the process, comments. So you should care. There's lots of people in the comments saying, well, why didn't they go get Patrick Queen? or Dr It takes two people, guys. Like The uh, the person has to want to come here. The, the contract has to be offered, and it can be a great contract, but if the player doesn't want the contract, they have to say yes, too. So like we, we don't know exactly who they did or didn't offer exactly what that's they did or didn't offer. That's a bad thing, right? That, so, that relationship I, ran couldn't convince uh, maybe. a player. Denard Wilson couldn't convince Patrick Queen to come over here for the same money or more money. I, I think it is. My whole, my philosophy, my thing is, is that they obviously didn't offer enough. The whole point of the NFL offer. is that you, maybe you're right. The whole point of the NFL is that you cannot stay great or fix all your problems it's it's incredibly difficult. It's the whole point of the league is designed to create balance and parity and to and to players churn and move and everything. And again, I think I really like some of the linebackers that I think could be long term solutions in the draft. But yes, you're right. Now it's no longer a fourth or fifth round pick. Maybe it's thirty eight. Maybe it's forty five. Maybe it's trade back and draft somebody at fifty. I junior junior Colson. I really love, but I think he's a later. Pick. I like junior Colson. I like junior Colson a lot. Edrin Cooper, I don't like him at 38, but I really like him as a player that could be a starting middle linebacker for this team. So there's he's, he's my got point bust is, written all over him. Let me tell you. Okay, fine. And and again, we can all argue about this player or that player and disagree. Well, that's I, a I don't process. I don't think you can fix. I know you guys are just, you're just going to disagree with me. That's fine. But I there's not a team in the NFL that is one of the worst in the league that can automatically fix itself outside of finding their guy at quarterback. And then building around that guy, like the Joe Burrow Bengals, like you can't instantly. It took the Packers like four years to to rebuild all the pieces with Matt Lafleur and Aaron Rodgers and the new defensive coordinator, and like they still haven't haven't like won anything. <laughs> like so, I don't. I, it just takes a long time, meaning like a couple of cycles, not a long time like eight years, like in other sports. I mean, like in NFL time length, right? Like it takes two drafts or two free agencies. This is Rand Carthon's second of both of those. He hasn't even had the draft yet. I, I just think let's, I think they've given themselves flexibility. I like most of the moves. I agree with you. Murray is the one I like the least and they have a hole there, but like it, maybe Danico Autry was going to leave no matter what. That might not be a Rand Carthon problem. I, I'm not, up, listen, I'm not upset about Danico Autry. Uh, I'm not upset about Aziz Al Shire leaving. I'm not upset about, I'm not as upset about other guys that got overpaid. I'm upset that they chose at the beginning of a cycle, beginning of free agency to overpay a player at a position of need. That's not good. And, and then let all the other linebackers that were just as affordable or less affordable, I mean, or, or more affordable, well, not, not pursue them aggressively enough. And that is a bad process. Okay. Okay, that that's just plain and simple. I think I think you know it's it's not about fixing the position. Some of these positions, like Jerome Baker, who got signed for a one year deal over at Seattle, you, the Tennessee Titans, let him leave and test his other market. That is not smart to me, and you know why? Because the, the most most people go with the last person they visit, so they obviously either didn't sell him well enough or didn't offer him a good contract. So either or, that's bad for the Tennessee Titans. Now, again, that's an example of an overarching process. I don't care about the position itself. I care about the process that led to right. the whole no, the I position. Agree. I agree. This and so when you do that, when you do that, you, you're going to have a hard time now fixing anything. 
like right now and and you're you're relying on someone to magically get cut that's good that which rarely happens bad players are the ones that tend to get cut or players that have been on the trading block all off season and there are no linebackers that are currently on the trading block involved in trade rumors or you're going to have to and so you're going to rely on Jack Gibbons some scrub that's not good enough to make another team or a rookie in the in being to be your linebacker unless they think Otis Reese in freaking <laughs> So uh, let me let and me clear. Murray are going to be anything. I mean, like, let's be honest here. This is not, and the same for defensive line. Shackle Brown and TK McClendon. I mean, there's a no, couple no, of I, guys you could plug next to Jeffrey Simmons, but that's another botch and another bad. Because now, so I, like, I, I think like, you're, to you're, your point, the linebacker, right? How who are you going to get in that spot? Because now you're having to choose linebacker or defensive line. You're, you're, you would win this argument with me a lot easier by talking about the defensive line because you cannot fix that the way you can fix linebacker. You can find you guys. Fix, you you can find guys. Right it, now, you can't you can do find it guys. Look, look, there is, a, there, is this, no, there is nothing there to fix with linebacker. Like, Do you all not understand the resources that are available out there, how the market looks? like? It's Again, it's about letting that market dry up. It's not about the position of linebacker or the devaluing of linebacker or whatever you want to say. The problem is that there isn't a good solution for this problem. There's a better solution for defensive line, but only because you have Jeffrey Simmons to take off a lot of pressure. There isn't anything like that for no, linebacker. No, I, 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 I don't disagree with, with that part. This is a good question here from, from Z. Dean. One trend that with Rand is that a lot of his contracts have outs in year two. Do you think this affects free agents. And I think that's an interesting angle. I don't I don't necessarily think that it does. Uh there's a lot of guys again we'll see what happens with potentially with 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 Chase Young here. Um I I just think what I meant by when I said I don't I was being a little dramatic when I said I don't give a fuck. I, obviously I care about every player and every position and every game and every snap and all that stuff matters. Everything that they do matters. Every part of the process matters, every decision they make matters. But ultimately I and and I, this is not um I don't like 100% agree with Easton on this, but I do to some degree, which I think is kind of where you fell on Thursday's show as well, which is that this needs to be about learning Will Levis first and foremost this season. If you get to seven or eight wins, great. Awesome. And if you can make the team better and build and fill holes through all the free agency and offseason processes and develop players and find some gems and find some big names like Ridley, great. But this is about you have a new coach who was brought in to run an offense. And the guy who is in charge of running that offense has been given some pieces that I think are pretty good. I like Pollard. I like Cushenberry. I like Ridley. You package him with Spears, who I know you love. We, we all like Hopkins, Skoronsky. You put it all together, and you have the most important part of your team. It, again, you've got to address tackle. I'm not denying that here. But the, thing that, spots. the thing that matters the most with this team is, is, is not how good a linebacker play they get this year. It's just not. And and I, I don't yes, disagree I with understand that, but oh my gosh. I mean, this is this is like talking process. to I get Twitter in human form. It's it's the process, it's not about okay, now that's, now that's but hurtful. also well, you know, <laughs> well then, so then tell me what's the what's wrong with the process with all the other because things you could have you could have done you could have got Jerome Baker, you could have got Patrick Queen, you could have got in Frankie Louvu, you could have made better attempts instead of focusing on a bad player and over. Kenneth Murray would still be out there. Let, let's be honest here. Kenneth Murray would still be out there. Instead, they went and overpaid at the very beginning. So that is a bad process, step one. Okay, okay. The well, other bad process is that they let the entire market pass them by, and all the contracts were super affordable and do not prevent you from I, doing anything that you've previously said. That I, is I've the heard, problem, is that everybody thinks it's an either-or situation. There is no either-or situation. Okay. It is just they chose to ignore the or. Okay, let me ask you. Do you trust the process with how they landed Calvin Ridley? Yes or no? You said it's a decent contract, not an overpay. I, yes I or think no? so. I think they had a good, okay. good, good process. Lloyd Cushion does not preclude them from having bad processes. Other, okay, just let areas. me do the thing here. Secret no, beverages, it's boring. Kicks group. It's pointless. Lloyd Cushenberry, do you trust? No, this is about deciding whether or not we trust Rand Carthon to make decisions and his process. So, do we trust the process with Ridley? Yes. Do we trust the process with Cushenberry? Yes. Okay. Do we trust the process with Nick Folk? Yes. In my answer. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, yeah, I would say so. Do you trust the process with Tony Pollard? 
Mm, I felt like you could have probably waited a little bit longer on Tony Pollard, but I do like the signing. I don't think the contract is that bad, but you probably could have got a better deal. I don't disagree, but a 26 year old who just come off, you know, I yeah. think, I think pretty good process there. And then of course, a Wuzier, you know, tough position, maybe a little bit of an overpay, but I still think I trust that yeah. process as kinda, well. Kind of so, like a, the, I, I think that you couldn't have waited on Shadobe. Uh, right. Agreed. So Ouzier. by, and you said you got no problem with Mason Rudolph. So by and large, across the entire, we're, we're talking about going eight and one here. And I'm not disagreeing with you about the process and about the position and about the problems, but we have to take the entire picture and say, how, how do we trust this, this organization? Because here's what we don't still know. We don't know if Will Levis is the guy. We don't know if Brian Callahan is the guy. And we don't know if Rand Carthon is the guy. We just don't. Only time will allow us to figure that out and to learn it. And if I'm going to sit back and look at, I, I left town and none of these players were on the team. <laughs> I came back to town and all these fucking guys are on the team. And I look at the team and I go, they're a better football team today than they were on Friday of two weeks ago. Are, does that mean they're going to be more wins? They're going to be better here or better there? Th when I say better, I mean better around Will Levis to learn what about the most important part, which is tied to the head coach. The, 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 uh, that is what matters the most to me. And I am. I would say if that's the only thing that, that matters, then yes, they had a, they by and large had a really good off season, but that is not the only thing that matters when it comes to team building. Completely agree. It matters most. And but it's not the only thing. Completely agree. And if you're they telling me... They did not me, maximize roster construction during this free agency, in my opinion. So going like eight out of nine, you're saying they, because they missed on one, they should have been nine and oh. I mean, I'm, I'm being they've very reductive missed, They've here. missed on, no, they've missed on two linebackers. They've missed on defensive line, three spots on the defensive line, and they have yet to fill up safety as well. Okay. And well, they I'm don't a, have either tackles. And and Joshua, <laughs> so, Joshua, yeah, Joshua agrees with you. Josh Medina says, yeah, I mean, it's, agree there's a that. lot when you left tackle, right tackle, no void of nothingness. You have a below average starter at linebacker and nothing beside him. You have you lack two starters on the defensive line. If you want to include a tart and a Danico Autry esque player, you have none of those guys. You have no safety and no other cornerback right now. Well, and now I listen, wasn't a draft will solve some of those things and the draft matches right. up well. For tackles, the draft matches up well for cornerbacks. The draft does not match up well for any of those other things that I mentioned. So, uh, like, I wasn't going to do, like, let's grade the free agency classes. Like, I wasn't going to do that on the show because we're just not, that's not what we do. Um, but this is not, like, I, I would not sit here and say, oh, great, elite job, well done, this is an A-plus thing. Like, that's not how I feel about this. No, it's, it's a it's very certainly not good offseason. I mean, so, I'm, so I'm so a far. big fan of the offseason. So, yeah, so far, yeah. So far, I think they've done as kind of well as they could have. And again, to your point, could have been, could they have done better here or there? Let's see what the rest of it shows up. Let's see what the draft class looks like. Let's see what anything else might look like before we st start rushing to, to failure here or maximize that or process this. And you may be completely right. I'm not even arguing with your perspective on this. I'm just saying uh, if I was the, the, the top priority, they went and addressed with a process that we both agree was pretty solid. And and that to me, if I'm a Titans fan, what I care the most about in this particular upcoming 2024 season, where Super Bowl is probably not something fans or people should be saying, is can Will Levis be a good enough quarterback to win a championship and compete at the highest level year in and year out? Does he deserve a, a, a five-year extension? And he's going to be the starting quarterback for this team for the foreseeable future. They, they are putting everything in place to give us the clearest answer to that question. They need to go get linemen. No question. If they can go get a couple tackles, and I know you guys were joking about this, but like tackle, tackle in the first and second round, wouldn't be opposed to it because I think everything is on the table. And you but don't I think, have linemen and a linebacker. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I don't that's disagree. The problem. I, you know, that's I, the problem is that that's the problem I have. And that's what is that you may have to. Because you, you said it yourself. Hey, I wouldn't rule out taking a defensive tackle. Well, then that's going to hurt your left tackle or right tackle position. Then you're not building around Will Levis. Like that, don't right? You talk I about, mean, like, don't you talk about Dylan Radens that way? I'm just saying that's the situation. No, I agree. I allow themselves to be put in. I agree, I agree to a point. I think the, the pushback on that I would give is that there are too many holes, too many problems, too many things 
and you have to sort of prioritize about sticking your finger and it's to sticking your finger in the leak. And they have not done that appropriately. And in reality, they have made it worse or harder to build around Will Levis via the draft because they did not attack aggressively in free agency, the defense. All right. Like I Um, said, all off season that they should. So let, let me see here. I'm trying to scroll back up and find some of the comments. So Brian, finally, uh, we can live with crappy linebackers if they fix the D line in the corners. I'm going to get through a couple of comments here. So just ha- hang tight. Um, and of course, we go down and let's see here. That guy, that that guy, Art, the second week of free agency and people are acting like we're not filling holes. You still have the draft and roster cuts when training camp starts. Now, I don't think depending on roster cuts, to your point, Zach, is a dependable way to build a roster in the NFL long term. Can you find exactly. a DeAndre Hopkins every now and then? Sure. Every now but and then. But he was very rumored. Rarely. We cannot use that as an example. It's very rare. Why. Because he was rumored to be on the trading block. And everybody knew that if they could not trade him, he was going to get cut. Everybody knew. It was the worst kept secret in football. They yeah. they even yeah. tried to include him in draft pick compensation. Nobody wanted to trade for him because they knew they could get him cheaper because he's cut. And there is not that linebacker. So people cannot use that as some kind of like, like rule or anything. And I'm not saying that's what you are, but people need to understand that. I want to be very clear. There is no DeAndre Hopkins-like situation coming no, at linebacker no. defensive line because we haven't heard of anybody trying to get trade one of those players. Uh, Jason said, he, he talking about Rand here, right. he, can't, he can't let those individuals, individual mistakes start to snowball like J-Rod did. I, will, I don't disagree with y'all's point. But it doesn't. But there is no general manager who bats a thousand. It, there's just not one. There's not a general manager in any sport that bats a thousand. Draft, free agency, development, coaching, and ran. I can't believe I'm the guy who's like, oh, let's give it time. It's Rand Carthon. Like, I, you know, yeah, it's, you, you hate I, find, him I, I don't. I don't hate. Stop. I never. I don't hate anybody. In, in you and your mentor were were very anti. Uh, my mentor, Rand Carthon. Yeah. John Stewart, <laughs> uh, Jared Stillman. Oh God, Jesus Christ! I, w- I was already offended enough at being called Titans Twitter. Uh, no, I love I love you, Titans Twitter, and you're not a bad one either, Stillman. I don't mind you either, big guy. Um, I-, I think you you said this on the pod. Like, if this team is playing in games that are forty eight forty two, and they go six and what is it, six and eleven now, six and eleven. And they're back in the top 10 picking, but Will Levis is the guy. I will consider it a successful season. Uh, can, and, can can Will Levis be the guy and them go six and eleven? That seems like it's a very they have no linebackers. <laughs> well, they, they have no defensive I mean, line, they, like you said. They also have no offensive tackles. So I know, agree. We'll I see. agree. Uh, but so but, but that seems like a very that doesn't really add up in my head. No, it, well, Regardless it, of linebackers being the, there are a million different ways to get to six and eleven. You can get to six and eleven with true. bad teams, with with teams that overachieve, with with healthy quarterbacks, with hurt quarterbacks. I mean, Joe Burrow had a bunch of weapons and they slung it all over the place and they were a bad football team. And then all of a sudden they weren't. Uh, and so I think that that th- this is clearly them trying to replicate something to that effect in a different kind of way. But they're clearly trying to take the the what he what Rand Carthon learned in San Francisco about how to build a team and build a roster and what Brian Callahan learned about what he's trying to do, what they did building a team and building a roster in Cincinnati and they're putting it together and that's all they're trying to do. And there's no way to know until the games happen, if this is the the right strategy or not. And could we, I I don't disagree with you about, about could they've spent more money on a better linebacker? Yeah. The answer is yes. What else is coming? Uh, I don't know what else is there. I want to see the whole picture before I, say that that was an utter complete failure on the on on the part of the front office and i i just lean more conservative when it comes to that kind of evaluation i, I guess i guess and if it's a high scoring team i think you could absolutely draft joe alt 7 score 38 points a game which again would be insane so that's that number is inflated but let's say tw- 31 points a game lose a bunch of games and and but learn that will levis is your guy i i absolutely think that that's possible i i think you can do that Sinker's Beverages, we'll Kingston Group. I mean, I just I worry about everything that you have said all off season from stuff that you've heard behind the scenes, you know, or not off season during the season and on the show, and what other people have alluded to, and then seeing some bad processes rear their head. I just I preach cautiousness, but I also preach that this idea that they couldn't do everything, they totally could. 
Uh, any, uh, and with the with the amount of resources that they have, with the amount of resources that they had, they could do a lot better attacking certain areas of free agency than they have. It's not meaning that they fix it, but it is meaning that they could have done better finding capable starters all throughout the defense. And listen, they could still trade for Legereus need, and that kind of changes the outlook for this whole team. But then you also have given up a high draft pick that yep. could be used to build around your 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 st- stud quarterback. So again, this whole idea that they've done they've done a good job so far, but the job is far from over from building around with building around Will Levis to give him until you got your two tackles that are actually good. Until you do that, you're still going to have a hard time. And right now, with the way that their roster is constructed. They're going to have a hard time finding two starting tackles for 2024. I, I look, I, I agree with you. And, and ultimately, what did we say? The second the whole Mike Vrabel thing went down and Rand Carthon became the guy. And then we finally got the Brian Callahan news. And then of course we got that weird statement where, you know, here's the power structure and it's very specific. And Rand Carthon has every decision under the sun, except for like what, how short the grass is cut is now Rand Carthon's ball. Pump. It's, it's all Rand Carthon. All of this is is on him. So coaching staff, players, free agency draft, it's all on him. And to your point about Amy Adams' trunk process, we we sort of have talked about this for years. The process sort of feels kind of uh, clunky at times, and then she's ended up at some good results. The process has felt clunky at times and ended up in some bad results. And this process was definitely clunky and ended up with Rand Carthon, Brian Callahan, and this offseason. So it's all, a, it's just, I'm not sitting here saying this is elite or or bad. I, I I see what they're trying to do at the majority of the positions, and it strikes me as the top priority, which is find out if Levis is the guy. Like you got to learn that this year. I agree with all the other stuff you're saying, and a lot of the commenters, right? Like Josh is saying they could have done everything. You know, a lot of you guys are are saying that they you guys all agree with Zach, and I don't disagree. I, I just see what they're doing, and and I'm okay with it for now. If they don't do some other things, <laughs> we'll have a different conversation. Uh, but let's see how let's see the rest of it come to into the into focus, and then and then lose our shit over it. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing. I, I'm just saying like wouldn't it be wouldn't it be just so Tennessee Titans for them to waste a 31 points per game season from Will <laughs> Levis because they didn't do simple things that they could have done in the off season to have a defense that doesn't bleed points that would be insane that but that'd be perfectly titans in a six and eleven season i don't know if rank carthon stays around with the, oh, this owner stop with this owner i'm I'm telling you another six and eleven season i don't know i i was thinking about you, this not not to go long with Sink, sinkers beverages kingston group we love you guys uh not to go long on this but i was thinking about this because you guys talked about it the, the 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 complicated dynamics between Will Levis, Rand Carthon, and Brian Callahan are interesting and not normal. It's not normal. We don't know how, what percent of Levis is Rand Carthon. We do know that Brian Callahan is zero Levis and all Carthon. We just have a very diff. It's a very normally you you sort of have the clean break and the clean start and the start happens and we didn't have that because the ownership's process was clunky. And so we we have these weird overlaps where like Carthon and the quarterback overlap, but the coach doesn't overlap with the quarterback, but he does with the GM. And it's, it's kind of, if things go bad, it's going to lead to some complicated conversations. I would just say it's not out of the question. And I think that if you think that it's just completely out of the question, I think that's totally ignoring the history of Amy Adams struck so far. But I mean, it's a very unlikely but I also say that that is just bad roster management to waste a season like that in, in your eyes, if they were to get, if they were to have a 31 point points per game season and go six and 11, because they didn't do the simple things they could have done. Yikes. I, 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 I think firing your general manager in his first real year on the job with the new head coach would be one of the dumbest things I've seen an owner do. Oh, I, I definitely agree with you. Uh, 100%. I just would not put it past the owner to do that thing. 
Um, all right. Well, uh, it's great to be back in Tennessee. Uh, I will say that. It's great to be back in my own house. It's great to be back on this particular program with all of you listening and hanging out with us. Uh, we do appreciate you guys. And please check out Sinker's Beverages. Check out the Kingston Group, Football and Other F-Words, StackingTheInbox.com. you got all the other great shows across the network, the Hot Read Podcast, Music City Audible, Paul Karski Podcast. Um, I, I, I feel very comfortable in saying this, Zach, about our process. There's not another there's not another place in the media landscape in this town where you're going to get the breadth and depth of coverage that you get from the folks on our platform. So I uh, just want to say thank you to all of you guys who watched and listened and thank you and Stoney and Easton and everybody else for picking up the slack and doing a great job last week. You guys are awesome and go listen to all those shows. <laughs> so so um, appreciate all you guys subscribe, like rate review, all that stuff that we get. We ask you guys to do. It's a, it's a big deal. It doesn't matter to us. So we do appreciate you guys. And yes, to some of you in the comments who are like, God, what are these two fucking jack wagons talking about in the middle of March? You're right. We only have like 11 more weeks to argue about this before camp opens. <laughs> so maybe longer than that, maybe like 14 weeks. I don't know. It's going to be fun. I think the Draft Titans will be here before you know it. I think the Titans are and the, and go sign up for the in crowd at Sinker's Beverages if you want to have a chance to be a part of our draft. Uh, let's call it a celebration. Is that is that fair? Call yeah. it a, a draft celebration. If you want to be a part of that, you will have an opportunity. But you got to sign up for the in crowd at Sinker's Beverages, Bluegrass Beverages as well. Anything else? What do you got? What do you got for the folks at Stack in the Inbox? Go ahead and tell everybody. Oh my God, we had so much happen last week. I uh, just promoted everything. Go to my pinned tweet on my profile to see everything that we did last week. Uh, this week, uh, diving in some of the stable metrics. Uh, we have some uh, hidden gems and film studies and draft notebooks uh, coming from Stoney. Um, I think this week we're doing uh, Amani Bailey hidden gem. Uh, and then we have um, tomorrow, Xavier, Le or actually maybe today, Xavier Leggett and ricky pearsall in the draft notebook which uh, dream my, because the tennessee titans guy. are going to have to use those draft picks on defense because of what they've done in free agency so forget those guys that was a waste of time um i do so love ricky, you know i love ricky pearsall i love that guy yeah, well tennessee titans prevents you from getting them uh and then we're going to have um let's see oh two-tone blue dudes and also uh, is going to get introduced to um Paul Karski on Thursday, paulkarski.com, and then stacking the inbox on Wednesday, which is the same thing I did last year for the um, for the wide receivers that are most likely to be drafted by the Tennessee Titans. There you go. Tons of stuff. Tons of stuff for your eyes and your ear holes and uh, your brain and all that other good stuff. So we do appreciate all of you. Again, I think the biggest takeaway for me, not to, not to disagree with anything you've said over the last 50, 60, 70 minutes here, uh, Calvin Ridley unlocks a lot of possibilities, both on the field, off the field, in the draft, and in the win-loss column. And I think that ultimately is still my biggest takeaway so far from free agency. Otherwise, we still have another show on Thursday. And football and other F-words coming this week as well. So make sure you check out all those great shows. Subscribe to Stack in the Inbox and shop at Sinker's Beverages and use the Kingston Group. Those are all great things you guys should do. For Zach, I am Braden. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for hanging out. We will talk to you on Thursday. It's good to be back.